Hi folks, uh, I'm going to use this video to show you how to tie a really simple and uh, very effective wee hair wing salmon fly. Um, so we're just going to use a bit of bucktail, a bit of squirrel tail, some cock cackle and some flash basically um, and put together something really simple but really pretty and, and very effective. Uh, it's going to be in some colours that I really like, particularly as we're coming to summertime. Um, yeah, a, bit of, a bit of fresh water in the summertime, the, the colour combination that we're going to use on, on this one is uh, a combination that I use very successfully. Um, so it's nice and vibrant with plenty of flash in it. So the hook that I've got in the vise here just now is a size 8 um, Esmond Drury, which might not be very fashionable these days, but they're exceedingly good hooks and I, uh, I'm not a particularly fashionable guy, so I don't... Uh, I don't much care for, for what's fashionable or not. So I'm just going to start with uh, a black thread. Now you could use for this scene, it's going to be quite a vibrant fly, you could use a, a coloured thread if you want. Um, I would actually probably have used a, a, a fire orange thread but I don't have any left so I'm just using a black one which is going to be ideal. So I'll just start up at the, the eye of the hook and start coming down. Nice kind of touching between turns. Just trim off that piece. Now the first thing I'm going to do here is tie in uh, the ribbing, which in this case is just going to be a, a small silver French oval tinsel. It's very versatile stuff, it's good stuff. So I'll take a piece of that. And that's the first thing I'm going to tie in. And it's just going to pinch down under the thread there and I'll come down with it and after a few turns of that I'm going to tie in my body material. So what I'm going to use for the body is um, a holographic pink flash. Oops. Um, yeah, holographic pink tinsel. I really am a big fan of pink in the salmon fly, particularly in the summertime. I, I really like it. So I'm going to use a length of this for the the body and that's just going to same again get tucked in under the, the hook shank and then wound down. Try not to do what I just did and almost cut your thread on the hook point. So next thing then is going to be the tail and for that I'm going to use bucktail. I'm going to use a, a mixture. I'm going to use two colours here. We're going to use a mixture of fluorescent orange. That's a a well used bucktail and pink. Now orange and pink it's not a colour combination that you tend to come across all that often but it's a colour combination that I, I just I, I love it in the summertime. As I say you have a, a bit of water in the summertime and orange and pink together is just a a really good combination. I I do very well with it. So I'm gonna go pretty sparse with this. Um so I'm gonna take a, a very small little section of, of bucktail out like that and it pays to choose your section quite carefully you're looking for a fairly straight fibred section and then what you need to do is you need to kind of dress this down a little bit so you can see that's kind of a little bit uneven just now and the easy way to do this would be the hair stacker but I don't have one so I'm just going to dress this down my fingers I'm going to take the drossy stuff out the back first of all and then I'm just going to kind of line the tips up in my fingers as best I can and it does not need to be perfect or anything like it and then I'll just trim them off the same length at the back so there's our our orange butt there so I'm going to moisten the, the butt ends of that and lay it carefully down on my, my desk and then I'm going to do exactly the same with the pink now this pink bucktail is it's unfortunately not as good a bucktail as that orange one. Um, it's a little bit crinkly, a little bit frizzy, but it's, it's workable. So we'll just go quite careful with it and do the same thing. We'll take out any really kind of egregious pieces that aren't just going to fit in very well. Again, I'll moisten those butt pieces and I'll lay them together. So there's my orange and my pink together. And what I'll then do is just trim the 
the back pieces to the same length on both of them. Now, you could, if you wanted to, you could just put that in like that, kind of pink over orange, but I, I much prefer to mix the colours a little bit. Now again, a hair stacker makes that a really easy thing to do, but you can do it in your fingers, just not quite so effectively. So you hold it tight at the butts and then take your, your thumbnail and just kind of draw your thumbnail through it and separate the fibres out and at the same time roll it with your other fingers and you won't get it perfect but you'll get a mixture of sorts and it just you know there's nothing wrong with the kind of old-fashioned traditional two-tone approach kind of blocks of colour over over one another but I, I, I like to to mix stuff up and get a slightly kind of more irregular looking fly so that's fairly well mixed I'm just going to again moisten the butt sections a wee touch just to keep them together and then I will tie these in along the top of the hook shank so again tail length up to yourself I you know I like a if I'm putting a tail on I like to put a tail on make it worthwhile you want a bit of movement but that's probably about the right length so just holding it down carefully on the top there a couple of loose turns and then just kind of fettle it into into position where you want it and then tighten down on it carefully avoiding those hook points okay now don't worry if you find you get the odd fibre sticking up and not going to behave in itself like that because you can fettle them together and it will all work out at the end. So I'm going to put a bit of flash in that tail. I'm going to put a, a strand of pink crystal flash in there. Certainly you'll need one, maybe two. We'll see how it looks because I'm probably going to put a gold strand in there as well. And there's a couple of strands of pink crystal flash there. Trim them off. And take a strand of gold crystal flash as well. Again, flashing your fly is one of those things that people are quite divided on. I I like I like a lot of flashing my flies. Um, you know, fairly subtle, but I like there to be flash and movement. So I'm just gonna them together and I'll just tie them in on top of the tail like that and then I'm going to trim these butt pieces off at a slight angle like that and then just work my way back up over them with the thread kind of tying everything in tight and giving ourselves a nice kind of tubular base to form our body on. I actually could have trimmed them off a bit closer to the eye, so I'll just build that section there up ever so slightly with the thread. So there's our tail in now. And I'm going to put in tie in our body, so that's this pink holographic tinsel and that's just going to be in tight touching turns coming all the way up right shine that ribbing out of the way that's better so making sure keep that tight and making sure that the turns are touching all the way up. And then two or three good. Turns in at the top. Be very careful. The way to cut this is very easy to cut your thread. The way to do it is to take the, the knuckles of your free hand and push your bobbin holder and your thread out of the way then use the, the, your thumb and your forefinger on that same hand to, to hold your 
your waist piece tight and then slide the scissors in close and nick it off. You sometimes still get it wrong. So the same with the with the ribbing, I'm just going to form a little silver tag on the end of the fly there, just a bit of decoration and also to protect that butt section on the back end of the body and then tight and even come up with that ribbing and tighten it by throwing a kind of a, a little locking bend into it as you tighten the thread as well. Okay, same again, push that out of the way with the knuckles, hold it tight and slide in the scissors, like that. So there we go, there's our, our tail, orange and pink tail and our, our pink body on there with the silver ribbing. And I'm going to put a... Uh, on the front end of this fly there's going to be a nice hackle, an orange hackle, and I'm going to put a squirrel tail wing on the top. So this is a, a fluorescent orange cock cape that, um, that actually I had this dyed um, and it came out really nicely. So I'm going to select a, a feather out of this cape. You could use, I mean, this is a cock cape, you could use a hen cape for this if you wanted. It would just give you a kind of softer hackle, a bit kind of webbier movement in it. There's nothing wrong with that either. So I'm going to tie this hackle in underneath by the tips. And I'm just going to come round. Kind of touching overlapping turns two or three times. And then lock that in nice and tight over the top like that. Okay, again I'll trim away this little waste piece. Now, obviously you've got some fibre sticking forward there. It's easier if you're not using a, a treble hook and to tie on, it's easier to keep them swept back as you wind the, the hack along, but when you're using a treble it's quite difficult to do that. It's not a problem, all you do is you just work them back after you've tied the hackle in. You just work them all back into the kind of swept back position that you want them. Hold them as best you can and then just put half a dozen thread turns over the top like that and I'll keep them exactly where you want them. One little rogue one there that I'm going to trim off. Now again what I'll do at this point, I don't know how, how well you can see this on the camera but I'm going to almost create a little gap in the top here so I'm going to take my thumb and I'm going to kind of squish that hackle down a little bit and to the side and I'm just going to manhandle it into position basically, just fettle it in to where I want it so that it's kind of a, a side and, and throat and then our, our squirrel wing on the top is going to gonna, gonna make up the, the top. So. I'm thinking on the top of this, now you could use any colour you wanted, even you know, grey squirrel would actually be nice on the top of this, but I'm thinking a bit of blue is going to look nice in this actually, especially for a kind of a summery fly. So I'm just going to take a smallish bunch of this blue squirrel tail and do exactly the same with this. You're going to have, especially with squirrel tail, you're going to have a lot of kind of fluffy, drossy stuff at the back. So what you do is you hold the tips really tight. And with the thumb and your forefinger on the other hand, you just fluff out the back and you keep going until you've got all the drossy stuff out and there's no more loose bits coming out. So once we're at that stage, again, what I will usually do at this point is just moisten that, the butt ends there in my mouth slightly. And it 
just makes them a bit easier to work with. Now again, I'll do the same with the tip ends now because what that will do is it'll allow me to to see how this is kind of going to naturally sit. So the way that's sitting, I'm probably going to want to turn that over. And it doesn't, it really doesn't matter. This is just being ultra fussy. You know, you kind of find your own ways of, of doing things. So we'll stick that in the top. Length of that, just kind of coming onto the tail, I suppose. So this is going to be a pinch and loop job at the top. So pinch the thread in between your thumb and your forefinger, then gradually draw it down, draw the loop down onto the onto the hair, and then tighten up. And really ramp the pressure up onto it from there. Okay. That looks fine. And I will then take these butt pieces off nice and tight, as tight as I can get them. Slide the scissors in. And if possible, get it all in one cut. Again, you sometimes get a wee rogue fibre there, if you not behave itself, but that's okay. So there's our square little wing, sitting not too bad, sitting a wee bit high, but not bad. That's fine. Um, and I'm going to put some flash on the top of that as well, just to finish the fly off. I'll put a couple of strands of this kind of mosaic, I think this is mosaic flash, it's called. Just a couple of strands of that. Rip them off. The good thing about this stuff is it's quite broad, but it tends to find the way it wants to sit of its own accord, so it's quite easy to work with. And again, the length of that is just going to be basically just about the same length or even just slightly longer than the wing. Okay. I'll tie that in there. Again, same with that. Take the waist pieces off. And then we'll build up our head. Now you could, at this point, what would really finish this fly off nicely would be a couple of jungle cock eyes. That would look really nice, but I've, uh, I've finished my jungle cock cape. I need to get a new one. Um, but I can't afford one at the minute, so we'll just tie and flies Son's jungle cock just now, which is still okay. So we'll build that head up into a nice, kind of neat, small bullet shaped head. And then when we come into the back, we'll lengthen the thread, snip it off the button holder, and whip finish. Whip finishing is one of those things that I find easy to do but impossible to explain, so I'm not even going to try. People usually will use the the tool to do this, the whip finish tool, but I've always found that more complicated than doing it by hand to be honest. Just make sure that's snugged up and nice and tight. And then keep the thread tight and slide the scissors in and snip that off. And there we have a very simple hair wing, squirrel wing salmon fly in summer uh, summer pillage, you might say. Well, good, good summer combination, those colours there. So I'll put some varnish on that. I'll take a needle and some varnish and put it on. Now normally I varnish flies in my hand. I'll try and do this one in the vise just to so you can see what I'm doing. So I've just got a little bead of varnish on the end of the needle there and I'm just going to touch it in to the head being as careful as I can to avoid the the hackle fibres. If you get varnish on them, what will happen is it'll um, they'll go brittle when it dries and start to burst off. Which you don't really want, so I'm going to try my best to avoid them. And I'm going to put probably probably three coats on this. The first coat will really 
kind of soak in to the fibres. You can see it looks kind of shiny there, but in a couple of minutes that will soak in. Um, and then I'll put another couple of coats on the top to to build the head up. But that um, that kind of design of of fly is very it's very simple and it's very effective, and you can tie that kind of design in all sorts of different color schemes. There's a, a kind of a black and blue and yellow there. Again, good. Good summery colour for grills. And there's your, your kind of a standard orangey, orangey yellow one. There, so you can tie that that design in in just about any colour scheme that you want. And they're very simple and very effective. So hope you enjoyed that. And um, if you're new to fly tying, hopefully it taught you something. And there's a thousand and one ways to tie flies, and everybody has their own ways of doing things. There's no right way or wrong way. Um, and as you as you go, you can develop your own your own preferences and your own interests. Uh, so we'll see you soon for another video. Thanks.